Hello, my name is Mike Goldman and welcome to On The Mic. On the show today is the CEO, the founder of Be What You Want. Hello, sir. I would like to be the host of my own show right now. Look what he did for me already. Congratulations. And when I say that, he, he did this for me because I've had a couple of sessions with him where he helped me talk through where I wanted to go in life, what I wanted to do. And he really is a great mentor and I've been wanting to get him on the show for ages to have a talk about his special online videos that he has that help people stop procrastinating, help them to get happy. Mm -hmm. And we thought we'd get you on today to talk about happiness. Yes. Because you're all about happiness. Who doesn't want to be happy in their life? Who doesn't want to enjoy life to the fullest? Well, that's what this guy's all about. And uh, well, what better person to have on the show to talk about it? Chris Hall, welcome to On The Mic. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. How are you, buddy? You well? I'm very well. It's great to be here. I'm what, what's excited. going on? Changing lives, kicking Ch asses and taking names? Mate, I'm all about connections. So I am loving where I'm at right now. I've got a load of events coming up and mm -hmm. I am in a very exciting journey of inspiring people online. Mm -hmm. So I've had a really fun experience over the last couple of months. How did you get into doing this self-help kind of stuff? Did someone, <sighs> did, did, were you like the Anthony Robbins path where he went out and he read all these motivational speaker books uh -huh. and and you thought there's a lot to this i really love it and thought I, I i'm learning a lot here i can help change people's lives or did you actually hit a point in your life where everything turned to shit and you wanted to turn it around Should or we, everything all of the above exactly yeah. should we go deep yeah yeah i would take me deep baby i'll go deep yeah the honest answer is that literally at the age of 25 both of my parents died oh which is heavy right mm. so when something like that happens it's a lot of common stories in personal development when you hear about people that have gone to rock bottom mm. and when you go to rock bottom you ne out of necessity you have to find ways to dig yourself out of that place mm. right so for me and i'm cool talking about this because i've done the work on myself right yeah. that was the very thing that honestly leads me to standing in front of you now because it kind of started that journey of personal development mm. going along to all these wonderful seminars reading the mm. books and and doing that work in myself so that I could know what a constructive and happy life actually looks like. In so, you, so you needed to find a way to drag yourself out yeah. of what would be a massive depression. Because I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have both of my parents yep. here at the moment. And they're amazing people. And I feel like I couldn't live without them. Yep. So, so how do you deal with something like that? Well, exactly. So I think like, and this does link to the stuff I teach about. You've got two aspects. You've got trauma, right? And how you deal with trauma. And then you've got building a constructive and positive life going forward. Now I'm about that latter piece, right? Mm. Um, in the things I teach about, I talk about the holistic nature of happiness. So what do I mean by holistic? Holistic is really about your life being whole and having many connected parts, mm. right? So we have to understand the connected parts of your physiology, your biology, the neurochemistry of happiness and what it looks like, lifestyle choices, all of the above. And if you can start to bring awareness to how those things fit together, mm. then you start to have that holistic tapestry of what happiness is and how it actually works, mm. right? Now, of course, when you come to dealing with a traumatic experience, whether mm. that be the death of a loved one, breaking mm. up with a partner, or just going through something very tough personally in life, mm. I think you've got two things you need to do. And the first one is to deal with that trauma, right? Mm. That's not what I specialize in. You can go and What to, did you do when you were a kid? Well, do you mean um, in terms of that particular point? Yeah. So I was 25 at the time. And, you know, for me, what that meant, okay, let's go deep. It was basically like walking along the knife edge of life, right? Mm. And down there is the version of Chris that everyone can always feel sorry for for the rest of my life, if you like, because, mm. oh, he lost his parents. So when he was you, you right? got to stop the repetitive circle of, of telling a story over yep. and over again. I, I did this uh, as a weekend course years ago called The Forum. I've done it. Landmark, Landmark. The Forum. Yeah. Done it. Yep. And, and basically, by the time you get to the end of the course, they tell you life is empty and meaningless and means nothing, yeah. which is basically their way of saying, Stop telling these repetitive stories. She left me because, you know, he left me because I lost my job because you need to just yep. break the cycle yep. and move on. And even, are you saying that you could even do that with something as full on as losing a loved one or parents and, and finding a positive way to move out of that? Yes, basically. Jeez, so that must have been tough. At it was. 23 it's tough. or whatever. 25, right? 25. And, and, the, and the thing is, is that that was such an intense chasm should we say of, of an emotion that I could go down yeah but I had this awareness in myself where like I'm not going to go there because that's just almost too terrifying too intense and so I'd rather actually go to this other place in mm. life which is this you know literally a constructive path mm. where I can 
redesign my life in a way where I'm looking after myself, where I'm feeling vital. And okay, I, so, you, so you're basically yeah. trying to figure out a way to design the life that you want. Yes. And, and leave the past behind in the past. Exactly. And yeah. just as a brief um, mention on, for example, Landmark and the Forum, because I've done that too, right? Did you do the advanced? Oh, man, I've done it all. <laughs> it did it all. I, I did, did the Forum and I thought it was great. And then they're like, and who wants to be involved to do the advanced course? And I was like, you just told me life's empty and meaningless and full of shit. I'm going to come back and do it again. But yeah, I did the advanced. I did the advance, okay. I did the leadership program and all that stuff. And it's great. It's good. Right? Anything you can do like that yeah. to, to better yourself as a human being, yeah. why the hell not? You so know, look, and, and there's a lot of shit in there that yeah. I didn't agree with. Yeah. But don't do it just because you, you think there's a few freaky people that do do don't back off because there's a few freaky people in those kind of courses or they might be saying stuff that you don't necessarily agree with. But yeah. you, you can take something from it that that helps you in your life, then do it. Here's the thing about every single personal development seminar that you might go on, right? Mm. You'll go along for the weekend and you can either get completely sucked into it yeah. and become part of a, almost a- It's like a cult. A cult, I hate yeah, to too, say the word, but like, it kind of is a bit no, culty. But, no, I know yeah. what you're talking about. Cause like yeah. at, at that course, is, it's probably one of the only courses I think I've ever done. Um, there were a lot of people there who did the forum and then they did the advanced and then they're like, that's their life now. Which is fair enough if they want to help people. But yep. it, I think, you know, it's it's- Nice to be a learner and not a, just a follower. Correct, right? Yeah. So then you can take that and apply it to say even Tony Robbins, right? So I've been to all the Tony Robbins courses, mm. love it, changed mm. my life too. So when you go to anything, it doesn't matter whether it's Landmark or Tony Robbins, if you make that your life, then I think you are getting boxed into a certain way of seeing the world, right? Mm. The way I look at it, and I agree with you, you gotta to go to these things and take from it what works for you. Mm. So that's the very reason, for example, that I call my course Discovering Your Path to Happiness. Mm. Cause it's just like a toolbox in laying out all the possible apparatus. Mm. It's giving you a bit of philosophy and insight behind it, but then the person that's consuming that gets mm. to pick what works mm. for them. Mm. So, but just briefly on the landmark thing about, you know, meaning and is life empty and meaningless, mm. right? Um, Personally, for me, I don't. I'm not a nihilist, right? Mm. So I don't believe. What's a nihilist? A nihilist is is this is this philosophy where it is all literally meaningless, mm. right? We just may as well destroy. Oh, it is all. that what that is? And it's not. I didn't know it had an yeah. actual yeah. terminology for what it was. Yeah, I believe it might even link to postmodernism and the idea that literally life is meaningless, right? Yeah, no, right. I don't believe it's meaningless. I what think. is the meaning of life, Siri? <laughs> right. Life is meaningless, Mike. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, exactly right. So so here's the thing. Here's the paradox. By going along and understanding that we are meaning-making machines, right? Mm -hmm. There's a guy called, I think it was Viktor Frankl, and he wrote mm -hmm. a book um, mm -hmm. about man's quest for meaning, right? Mm -hmm. And in that book, he talks about that man will, a man or woman will make a meaning out of a situation. That's just the way we work as mm -hmm. humans, right? Now, by doing all sorts of personal development, you get to take that apart and go, actually, wait a minute, the event is neutral, right? So what that means is something can happen to you and it's your interpretation and your reaction or your response to the event mm. that will define the meaning that you're making out of it, mm. right? Um, so real life example for me, going back to my parents, right? Mm. So literally, I, you know, on within two hours of finding out, I had to go and tell my sister. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's intense, right? Yeah. 25, I had to tell my sister? Yeah. You know, and um, you know, God bless her. So that's the ultimate shot for her, of course. And How did you tell her that? You just, you just do it. You go yeah, around, it's like wow. 10 o'clock at night and you do it. But, but what I remember, and this comes back down to meaning, right? Mm. And the meanings you make. We looked each other in the eyes and almost simultaneously said, God, we were lucky. Yeah. So can you see how there's an element of the meaning of gratitude in that moment? So you're saying we we're lucky to have two great pa Amazing parents people. who loved us and cared about us. And exactly. How, it, I, we don't want to talk about this too much because we're supposed to be doing a, a <laughs> chat about happiness. But how did they die? Um, in an avalanche. So they were avalanche. an avalanche. They were mountaineering in the French Pyrenees and the snow took them. That's messed up. It so is. When something's so sudden, it just yeah. comes out of nowhere. Like my dear old dad, God bless his soul. He's he's had cancer for about seven or eight years right. now, and that that's that is going over for a long time. And you yeah. you kind of prepare yourself for, mm -hmm. for the in inevitable or what could happen. But now it looks like he's just going to keep chugging along forever because just the technology is amazing and the, the yeah. surgery and things that they can do. Yeah. 
but to just have it come smack bang out of nowhere, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't even want to go into it. So let's let's leave that behind. It's okay because I, I think yeah, let's uh, unless it. that's a part of the story is how how you're clawing your way to happiness because I know there's a lot of people who yeah. be watching this going, okay, I want to get happy, and we've just started talking about your your parents, but if that's yeah. that's the journey that you went through to figure out the best path to happiness. Well, exactly, and and the thing I want to just finish off on that subject though is that. When we have trauma in life, deal with the trauma, right? And then as well as dealing with the trauma, find out a constructive, positive way forward. And that's the kind of things that I teach about. Um, When you are dealing with the trauma, go to a professional, usually maybe a psychotherapist, a hypnotherapist, a healer, whatever it is, whatever works for you. Mm. Access that level of self-care so that whenever, for example, this conversation comes up now, and Mm. I'm not bawling to you, you know, I've Mm. moved on from this now, I'm able to talk about it and I can... Yeah, I'm connecting with it. It's, mm. it's very much part of who I am, mm. but it doesn't define me anymore. Mm. Well, maybe it does in many ways, but mm. it doesn't own me. Mm. That's probably a better way. Of what about it. a lot of people when they're, they're trying to get out of depression, they turn to drugs or, sure. or, or, or some sort of you know, medical help that will help them yep. you know, be positive? Absolutely. What's that, what, what is it called that, that people take that, um, that make themselves happy if they're depressed all the time, anti-anxiety drugs yeah, or antidepressants. Um, yeah, yeah, antidepressants. I mean, I mean, right. I, mean I, I don't know about having to rely on those kind of things, but yep. is that? I mean, you obviously seek medical advice, but look, depression is a very real thing. Mm. Um, so, sixteen point two million people in the US have at least one major episode of depression. That's about five percent of the population. So, it's a real thing. I love people who can just pull stats out of their ass like that. Do you know what my <laughs> wife calls me? Spongy. Yeah. Spongy. <laughs> you just, well, that, that's a, the best person to be, you know, someone who gets up on stage and talks about how to make your life better. Yeah. Is, is someone who is just a sponge that absorbs all that information. Say those stats again one more time. 16.2 million Americans have had at least one major episode of depression. Oh, wow. Right? right. Now, that's the diagnosed stuff. Mm. I think that we all, we all are susceptible to some form of mood swing or even depression to some extent, right? Yeah. So again, but, but, you know, I, I think people have things that go yep. wrong in their lives oh, but yeah, yeah. but just just going to take pills and get medicated I, I think americans are more likely to do that because yep. every single commercial break is filled with ads telling people to take drugs for yep. everything yeah and and i've got a problem with uh is a drug called ritalin that yep. they, they put kids on because yep. kids are Stop. hyperactive like yep. I, I reckon if that was around or they were, they were prescribing it a lot more when i was a kid i would have got that for sure because mm-hmm. i wasn't allowed to drink coca-cola i'm not saying that um, my parents didn't do a good job of bringing me up, but mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of kids out there mm-hmm. that are just overly energetic. Mm-hmm. And I would equate it to uh, like having having a dog, if it's sitting at home in the lounge room yep. and it's running around like an idiot, you're not yep. going to drug it. You're just going to take it out and for let it go walk. for a run and then it'll take exactly. it for a walk. Yeah. I, think, I think a lot of kids would be in that same position and, and parents need to actually look after them a little well, bit better and take them out. That. And let's talk about nature's answer, right? Yeah. Cause you, you know, say like is drugs the answer. Well, you know, sometimes that's very necessary. So mm. I'm not a medical practitioner, but what I can say is that again, here's a stat for you. Nature's Aust- answer for Nature's happiness. answer, right? Australia's Black Dog Institute um, yeah. is in Australia dealing yeah. with depression. Um, and Beyond Blue, there's lots of, lots of institutions. Wonderful organizations, yeah. right? Are You Okay Day? Um, mm. All amazing people and organizations. So. The Black Dog Institute has proven and done studies that just one hour of exercise a week can help alleviate depression. Now, oh, that's, wow. that's interesting. So they focus and specialize in depression. And then you've got, you know, you've got um, the, uh, the vastness of the issue. But then let's go down to the neurochemistry, because this is where all the interesting bits are, right? Mm. So um, you've got four main neurochemicals that are dealing with happiness. Mm. And one of them are, is endorphins, right? Mm. So... Um, Endorphins are actually a form of opioid, right? So What's an opioid? Well, heroin's an opioid. Oh, like opium, opioid. Yes. Right, okay. Right? So, so think about the literalness of that. You can either go to the extremity of a needle to get that, or you can go to Mother Nature, mm. right? And what do I mean by that? If you get outside, and, get outside and exercise, we often get what's called the runner's high, right? You know when you feel pumped after going for a workout, going to the gym or for a run or something? The runner's high literally is... It literally is endorphins. Endorphins running through your body. Yeah. I, I must admit, there are so many times when I've felt, you know, a little bit anxious mm-hmm. or stressed out. If I go for a run and just sweat it out, I feel so much better. Yeah. And that's what it is, endorphins. I feel like it's like getting the blood pumping, yeah. cleaning out the old rusty pipes yeah. Yeah. and making you feel better. Do some exercise, goddammit. 
Exercise, absolutely. And embrace your dark side, mm. right? So we've got all this happiness again. Embrace your dark embrace side. Embrace your dark side. You will be turned to the dark side <laughs> of a the red force, lightsaber young whore. Yeah. Uh, no, what that means is that you've got different parts of your personality. And if we ignore them and suppress them, and mm. actually they'll just rear their ugly head at some point. So, for example, for me as a man, I need to go for a run to get out that primeval part of me that just wants to smash stuff up and break it because men kind of have aggression built into yeah, them, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so I think that's why a lot of people go to the gym. Like if you're, you know, no, say you're a fitness trainer and you do um, circuit training with F45 or something cool like that, or you go running all the time, it's because you want to get out this part of you that just is a bit pissed off about life, right? Mm. So actually happiness is about clearing the deck of all the, all this kind of crap energy that you've got in you, but you can't ignore it and just mm. go, yay, happy nurse, clappy, clappy. Yeah, 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 you can't ignore it. Right? Mm. Um, so back on the endorphins is a funny one. Mm. Um, do you like spicy food? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how does, hot? Does spicy food make you happy? What? It does. How oh, hot? It makes me happy, yeah, definitely. I mean, I like it, so I guess, but it also gets your endorphins going. Well, that's it. Have you had oh. a vindaloo? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Rogan Josh or something absolutely. super spicy. Ouch. Right. Yeah. Personally, I like to sweat. I like to sometimes hallucinate from the level of spice until I may well pass out. What? <laughs> I could, but I love it can, hot, can, right? Can you hallucinate from having too I, much I swear chili? I have. I absolutely What's have. What's the hottest chili you've ever had? Um, I've had the bird's eye chili and I've had a vindaloo and I've mixed them all together. And actually, one funny experience. Whoa. My mate, my old flatmate in Manchester, where I'm from originally, yeah. he bought me a bottle of beer with a bird's eye chili in it. Um, what, is, what is bird's eye chili? It's one of the hottest chilies, right? It's okay. just the little tiny red ones. Because in Australia, we've actually got a, a, a fruit and veggie brand called Bird's Eye. That's right. And I was yeah. just thinking of something frozen in the freezer at Woolies. <laughs> like get a bird's eye chili. It doesn't sound that bad. The bird's eye chili is one of the worst in the world, is it? It is. It yeah, is. All right. But it was in the beer. And so you got this chili in the beer and we all pass it around the table and have a little sip and go, Oof, that's really hot. Yeah. But me being 23 at the time or something and uh-huh. a young bravado filled man at the mm. time went here you go i'll down it i'll show you how much how much i like chili i down the thing and then that night yeah. in bed i was in the fetal position crying as a full-grown oh, man because man. i'd burnt the entire inside of my intestine oh, see crack. that's why you can handle chili because the insides <laughs> of you are burnt from when you're a kid <laughs> i just burn it all to the ground but endorphins what happens there is that anything that's literally spicy causes a pain response in your brain and to deal with that pain response you're you release endorphins. And that's actually the same with your legs. For example, if you're going for a run and you, you've got a, an intense workout going on on your thighs after going for a run, your body is having a pain response. And so it releases endorphins. You also get it from eating chocolate. So yes, chocolate makes you happy. Chocolate makes you happy. <laughs> sex. And sex. Sex is oxytocin. Oh. Right? So oxytocin, again, mm. another neurochemical, um, is, uh, is what is released when a mother gives birth to a child and also mm. breastfeed. So that's why there's the maternal bond. Oh, and also... It's love. It's love. Right? Love. So sex really is the glue of a relationship. Yeah. Literally, because it's oxytocin. Hmm. Now, oxytocin... What about just paying for sex? Will that make you happy? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know... Temporarily. Can money buy you happiness? We'll get onto that in a bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but yeah, oxytocin, for example, uh, is also from a hug. Hmm. So, you know, do you want to hug it out? Maybe later? Right now? Yeah. Come on. It's been a while, mate. It's been far too long. No kisses, just a hug. Chris, I love Paris. Thank you for bringing me here under the Eiffel Tower. And remember, 10 seconds. If you hold it for 10 seconds, then you really release the It really makes you happy. Oh, so happy. I feel better. Okay, that's enough. Okay, that's enough. Um, (laughs) Thank you for the oxytocin. Uh, mate, so uh, the, the happiness path that, yes. that was that was making us happy, hugging, being Correct. under the Eiffel Tower. Uh, so you help a lot of people find happiness in their life. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dalai Lama wrote a book called The Art of Happiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the art of happiness? Well, so it is an art and a science, right? Mm. So um, I think that the science bit comes from some of these neurochemicals, for example, that we're talking about. And the art comes from from that flair, that personal flair that you're willing to apply to your own life because some of these things are very much about relationships and relationships is not about science, it's about an art. Um, There's definitely an art to a relationship. Mm. Um, So, I mean, I'll throw it again, let me get a statistic out. 50% of your happiness levels can be determined by your genetics, right? Really? So... People always said to me, oh, you're a happy guy. You know, mm. I, I get it, Chris, you know, does this stuff. My mum, she told me that she gets a bit of depression. 
Right. And so does that mean that I'm going to inherit that? There's 50% of you, roughly, that is going to drive your level of happiness according to your genetics, hmm. right? That's all we can say, right? Now, 10% is determined by your circumstances. So what could your circumstances be? It could be about how much money you got, where you're living, the things hmm. around you, right? Yeah. Now, but but, but are, we, are we trained as, as humans to constantly be chasing the carrot? That's you know? the thing. Constantly be going, okay, that, that's not good enough. And, and that's why you see kids who, you know, born with a silver spoon in their mouth mm-hmm. and they're given everything on a platter. Mm-hmm. They're not happy because they don't mm-hmm. really have anything to strive towards. And that's because it's the 10%. Yeah. And this is the messed up thing culturally. We are taught, popular culture, that we must strive for the next career thing, the next big house, you know, once you got the house, then you get the Ferrari, then you want the to do that. The Australian dream is, is to own your own home. Yeah. Like, why do you have to own your own home? Like, well, why do yeah. you, you have to be tied to a mortgage for the rest of your life? Exactly. It just clips your wings. Just pay rent. Do you know that the word mortgage is from French and it actually relates to death? Really? So you're tied okay. with so you death to something, the bank. Something until you die. That makes complete sense. Right? We will bleed you until you are dead. And there we go. And then we'll take the house. Um, but um, Just constantly <laughs> chasing something else. And, and, and I mean, that, that's a lot, of a, a lot of problems with social media, I think, where yes. people are constantly looking at what other people have. Yep. And most of the time, what those other people are doing on social media is just pretending to be something that they're not. Correct. So it's a projection of Especially a on my Instagram account. <laughs> Not at all. What are you talking about? Absolutely. Well, today, what was it? Birds and chickens. <laughs> well, that I mean, that is pretty uplifting. That, that was bizarre. Yes. That's, that's another episode with Chrissy Stanley. Make sure you check that out. That's very happy right there. So take the 50%, take the 10%, and then try and smash that illusion to say, hey, you know what? It's not about money. Actually, mm-hmm. there's something intentional that we can do with our lives. So it's the intentional activities and the mm-hmm. practices that make up the 40% that will determine your happiness levels. Hmm. So I like to frame this in the context of needs and relationships. So Hmm. there's something called the Maslow hierarchy of needs, Hmm. right? And it was in the late forties that it was um, written in a paper by Abraham Maslow. And he basically said, look, you've got your physiological needs. Do you have something to drink, something to drink, somewhere to stay tonight? Mm. And if you don't have that sorted out, then how can you possibly be happy, right? It's like literally it needs in life. The next one is safety. So safety, for example, can be anything from your well-being. Have you got your health? Mm -hmm. So like think about a time when you've been dog sick and Mm -hmm. you're out for a week. Yeah. You'd give anything to be healthy. Anything. Yeah. So like health really is wealth. Mm. Um, It also, security also, safety also means your financial security. So I've been a business owner for about seven years now and plenty of times we've gone to everything from like near bankruptcy to like, oh my God, this is happening. How am I going to deal with it? You go through all of the storms of life, right? Mm. Now, what I can tell you from personal experience is that when you're in those tough times of having, for example, your wage packet threatened or will I lose the money that I invested into my business, that literally impacts your sense of personal financial safety, right? So it's literally, you're so stressed out and in a survival mode that it's impossible to even think about having even a conversation about this. Like, hey, some, what's some people, all about? Some people, I, I find, look mm. like they're in survival mode mm-hmm. when they're in business. Mm. And one guy in particular, I think off the top of my head, and he's, he's just he got this look of desperation about mm-hmm. him as a salesman. And he's just constantly on the phone, mm-hmm. constantly chasing that next buck. Yep. And... I think maybe that's a sign you should change your career and, and, and do something you enjoy because the, it's the old saying, you know, you, you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. Yes, exactly right, exactly right. And, um, but when you're in that place, and here's the thing, it might sound obvious, but when you're in that place, from a needs point of view, it, I think it's one's personal mission to fix that stuff, right? And that could be anything from um, changing your career to something that pays you better. It could be looking at your own personal outgoings to make sure that you're not just blowing money on bottles of bourbon champagne if you don't need it. Mm. You know, maybe you need to just tighten the reins this week so you can mm. have a healthy budget. And it all sounds quite straighty, 180 and very boring, but, but, <laughs> but deal with that because otherwise you're not addressing your needs, right? Now, now the reason I set that up like that is that mm. once you've got your needs sorted out, you can then move up to the next level, which is at the level of love and belonging. Mm. Now, love and belonging is all about relationships, mm. right? So relationships are where 
a vast, vast majority of your happiness level will be hmm. residing, right? On uh, the other person. Well, like, like worrying about if they're happy because if they're not happy, I'm not happy, and then they could turn into a fight. Through, well, maybe, yeah, but, no, but, 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 but through authentic relationships. So, for example, let's talk about quality time, right? Yeah. So, like, I've, um, I'm a dad, I've got my two year old son, and quality time to me literally is sticking him in the car, going down to Terrigal on the Central Coast, spending $10 on ice cream. And he'll go absolutely crazy on sugar for a couple of hours and run around the parade. And I'll hold his hand and we'll watch the sunset and all this kind of stuff. And it sounds cheesy, but you know what? I'm never happier than in those moments. Until the sugar rush wears off. <laughs> yeah, and and he throws a tantrum. <laughs> yes. And then you just want to give him a little bit of baby Panadol yeah, exactly. so he goes to sleep. Yeah, that's real too. <laughs> but on quality time, and let's link this to money. So yeah. the idea of like, can money buy you happiness? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. it can to some extent. Of course, it's 10% of... Your happiness level yeah. and of course you need some money to do certain activities like mm. you know, if I want to if I don't have 10 bucks to buy my son some ice cream or maybe I want to join the local rowing club or the surf club and I don't have money for the membership whatever it is mm. you need certain amounts of money to deal with that but fundamentally mm. the people that actually matter yeah. in your life the people that are truly your friends and mm. family they care about you. Yeah. They just want to sit down with you. If you yeah. don't have the money, they'll buy you a beer. It, it's, it's the little things in life. Yeah. That are often the best and the things that make you the most happy. It's like, yeah. uh, I've been in India, but I've heard so many stories about like a, a family be living in a, a roundabout in the middle of the road. Right. And, and they're just living the happiest life. Right. They all look like they're having a grand old time. Mm-hmm. And then you'd have someone in living in a, a penthouse in New York who's yep. earning you know, $50 million a year who's sad as shit Mm -hmm. and you know obviously that person's used to living the high life and that Mm -hmm. person doesn't know anything different than living in the middle of a road of a roundabout yeah but when when you strip it back what Mm -hmm. you're saying and you just get to the essence of what really does make you happy spending Mm -hmm. time with your friends and family Mm -hmm. but what if your family are a pain in the ass (laughs) what if what if you've got this uncle who ripped you off by making you buy something you didn't want to buy or a you know, a, a cousin who just never shuts up, who, who just says the most annoying and stupid things. Because I find, I'm not saying that any of them are my family members, by the way. <laughs> if any, like, any of my family going, is that me? <laughs> He's talking about me. I'm unsubscribing to his show. Because um, I, I find, I never like to, to throw, I, I never want to throw away a relationship. Yeah especially if it's a family member. Yep. If if someone annoys the crap out of me, I think it's best to just walk away and, mm-hmm. and leave them alone for a while. Um, and I, I think that with, with friends as well, mm-hmm. um, just because one chapter's bad doesn't mean I want to throw the whole book away. Totally. But but how do you you know you get out of that shit zone when you're in that in that situation with someone where you, you know you just know that that's them and that's your family member who who's going to be a pain in the ass, but there's times there where it's great and you love spending time with them. The energy vampires, mm. right? Okay. I think we first need to understand what toxic relationships look like. Yeah. Right? So, you know... Because some people don't know. They exactly. think a toxic relationship is, you know, someone that spends their money or... Right. What, what is a toxic relationship? Someone who, who doesn't give you anything or just is demanding or... So often a person that is the person that's the toxic person, they are usually narcissistic, so they're obsessed with themselves, Right. <laughs> but you're nice you're not toxic you're lovely okay thank you you're welcome um they're often very controlling right so they're wanting to see exactly where you're going what you're doing and what you're allowed to do right mm. oh i hate that demeaning mm. you know so they'll put you down and there's usually something that you were attracted to in the original part of the relationship and it doesn't have to be an intimate one it could be a friendship as well right mm. maybe you were attracted to their outbound flair maybe actually you didn't realize they were narcissistic and you just thought that they were wonderful, confident and flamboyant and so amazing socially and hey, I wanna be around that person, right? Mm. And you were attracted to that. So what they'll do is they'll give you those little nuggets of the thing that you know um, you like about them. Oh, okay, they tease you a little they'll bit. They tease you. Like, and then they punch you a little bit. They'll punch you right in the like, guts. Like treat them mean, keep them keen. Exactly. So it's a bit sadomasochistic. It's, it's very much, you know, they're very, they'll give you a little bit, but then they'll knock you right down. They'll knock you too much. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Um, and they're usually self-obsessed in terms of, you know, it's all not just obsessed with themselves, but they don't, they literally almost psychotically don't care about what's going on in your life, right? Mm. So, is that, is that a, cro- a controlling tactic? Mm-hmm. So they can control you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the person that's in the situation that's, 
being treated like shit essentially because that's what's happening yep. um why do they stay in those situations why don't they just go right yeah time to get out well there's two things you can do so strategy number one is create your own personal boundaries and express that hey this is not okay if you when you i've noticed that when you do this you're trying to put me down um, I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And mm. you actually have a conversation about that. Mm. So say, for example, if it's with a non-aggressive family member, because there mm. are unfortunately aggressive family members physically and emotionally, right? And then you could have a constructive conversation about mm. something like that. So you can put boundaries back up and still choose to be around the person, right? Mm. Strategy number two is to physically physically remove yourself from that relationship. Yeah. Now, when it comes to physical abuse that's a very serious thing and yeah you, you know no one should put up with that no one should put up with that but i think there's also very real dangers of someone being you know physically impacted by by leaving or yeah. even sparking up an argument that's when you need to seek help right yeah. there are helplines out there and you can even get the police involved find a discreet way to exit safely and and do that but but toxicity you know that's the extreme version right mm -hmm. But there are people that just are downers, right? And they mm. are energy vampires and they're always eggheads and whatever else. Um, they're not always toxic, but it's just ultimately a personal choice about whether you want them in your life. And, mm. and if you do want them in your life, then, then that's fine. Um, and you just need to you know, have some personal I, I think you just gotta, gotta, gotta say, hey, this has been happening. Yep. Call a spade a spade. Yep. Uh, this is how it's making me feel. Yeah. And I wanna know what you can do about it to make it better. If you're not gonna do anything, then see ya. Pretty much. Wouldn't want to be here. Yeah. So what are the common myths about happiness? Right. It's that we can be happy in all areas of life. It's never possible. It's the, the idea of perfection, perfect happiness does not exist by definition. Um, and the reason for that is that as humans, we're striving for things. We're inspired by the possibility of something. We want opportunity. Mm. Um, so... For example, if you've got the billionaire in the penthouse, if he's got no further to go, then he's not inspired by his or her life anymore because they've reached the top and it's like, well, what's it all mean? No, nothing. And I've got no relationships or any friendships and everyone hates me and I've got this load of money. Penthouse guy should just start helping people and yes. feeling good about his life exactly. and, and himself. Exactly. No, yeah. but, but jokes aside, so like it's all about striving for something. So in the coaching context, so like, you know, I'm a coach and we talk about going for goals and we use something called the wheel of life. And the wheel of life is putting the different areas of your life into segments on this wheel. And it could be your finances, your health, your career, and you give yourself a little rating out of five. Mm. And then it's up to the client to do that themselves. I'm so this is your little system you came up with? Absolutely, It's yeah. the happiness wheel. The happiness wheel. Oh, nice. Well, it actually relates back to Buddhism, um, I believe, and the yeah. wheel of life, but it's used Buddha had a happiness wheel. Absolutely, man. Nice. Right? But when you give yourself a rating, right? Mm. Um, you get to rate yourself. You, and that's the- You that's don't give it to someone else. Can you please rate me on my happiness wheel? It's the honesty bit, right? Mm. You gotta do it yourself. Like how happy am I really? Do you know what the truth is about this happiness thing? It's like Neo in the Matrix. Mm. You gotta be willing to take the red pill. Cause once you've taken that red yeah. pill of awareness in yeah. terms of, oh wow, like maybe I need to look up. Looking up. at yourself and becoming self-aware because pe people do get very caught up in their own thoughts and in their own yep. head. Yep. And I think they lose track of who they really are and what's really going on. Yep. And so having a happiness wheel, as you like to call it, which I love, I think that's cool, <laughs> is, is a way to self-reflect Yep. and to go, all right, What's on this happiness wheel? Mm -hmm. Like section one, what would that be? Where it would be am career, I for example. So, you know, career. okay, right. I am, I am number three in career right now. So if you think about the amount of time that you spend- it up to 10? Well, it's up to five, out of five, five okay, being cool. the highest, I was right? gonna say, it's a low score. We need yeah. to get our next <laughs> <laughs> um, So if you give yourself, hey, I'm not happy with this right now, I'm giving myself a three. Yeah. And it's just that it, it's a prompt within yourself to go, well, what can I do about that? And that's when a coach can help, you know, bring you into an action plan, for example. Now because we are always striving for something better, yeah. you may have, re let's say for example, you've done the Aussie dream and you bought your house. Yeah. Um, and that's the pinnacle of it right now. And you hate, right now, in terms of finances, I'm a five, I'm really happy with that. Mm. But I've not been, paying, not been paying attention to my health. So I'm a three, because I need to go to the gym more often or whatever. You'll always find that there's something you want to improve on. So the biggest myth is that we can have perfection in all areas of this happiness wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this career, what is there? Family, family, entertainment. Yep. What, is, what, what else is on the wheel? Well, or actually, you, just put, you just put on this wheel, what, what are the factors of your life that you want to improve? Or that's it? exactly it. So okay. we put suggestions on there to oh, say, okay. you know, this is a, an example template, but if you want to include whatever it is, being a marathon runner, you know, then include that because that's part of you and who you are and what your identity is about. Mm. 
Um, so, so man's yeah. greatest invention was the wheel, and now Chris Hall's greatest invention <laughs> is the wheel of happiness. Let the me, wheel of happiness. The, the happiness wheel. Happ- the happiness wheel. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Sounds really cheesy, doesn't it? Wheel of happiness. You could call it WAP for short. Ooh. What? Like what no. Wheel of happy. No. No. It's ha- wah. 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 The, the wah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, look, I love your wheel. That, that's really cool. I appreciate. It. I'm glad you like my wheel. And so. You mentioned, obviously, in the wheel, there's career yep. and there's health yep. and there's family yep. and relationships or whatever people decide to put in their little yep. wheel. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do once you've mm-hmm. rated yourself out of yep. one to five and your rating's really low? You mentioned something about an action plan. How does that come yep. about? Exactly. So what you do is by, first of all, acknowledging that you're not where you want to be, you then start to look at the reality of a situation. You will bring, say, for example some gratitude to the things that are working well, and then you have a conversation about the things that aren't working well. Hmm. And then from that, you'll then go to understanding what opportunities exist and could exist, and then literally a way forward. Um, I'm literally describing something called the GROW model. It's like a little insight to the coaching industry. The right? GROW model. The GROW model. How to grow that section of your life that you want to improve. Exactly. Now, right. all coaches that are qualified usually end up using something like that, mm-hmm. right? Um, but the reason that coming up with an action plan and a way forward is important is that Jim Rohn, the motivational speaker. I love Jim Rohn. Amazing, right? He, he was he was a guy that um, he, he, he built Herbalife, the Herbalife yeah. industry, didn't he? Yeah. But he, he just started out, um, he had a mentor who was this great business mind mm-hmm. and he did really well out of his business yep. when, when he was, he was um, I can't remember what he was working in mm-hmm. before Herbalife and he did a couple of talks at, mm-hmm. at like Lions Club events or something like that and realized, hey, there's something in this. They want to pay me to talk. Incredible person. And yeah. he was like the original motivational speaker dude. So if, I'm rem- if my memory serves me correctly, Tony Robbins... Um, was mentored by him. Yes. Right. For like a year or something. And then, he, you know, and then he moved on to his own thing. But I love his definition of success. Hmm. Success is the steady progress to one's personal goals. The steady progress to one, towards one's personal goals. Can you say it like him? Success! Success! And now he says his words out! Like Jerry Seinfeld! Is making progress towards your personal goals. Yeah. Now, what does that mean, right? But you've got to set your goals, though. A lot of people, you've got to set your goals. A lot of people, yeah. like, I, I've never been much of a goal setter. Yep. I've, I've been someone who looks for opportunities. Mm-hmm. I'm an opportunist mm-hmm. because I've always been on the same path mm. of what I want to know and what I want to achieve with my career, mm-hmm. first and foremost. Relationships is a different story. But things are going great, darling, if you're watching. Um, and, and if there's people out there, they're going, okay, well, they're like me. Yep. They're just in a career yep. uh, or in a job and, and they don't really set goals. Like, how do you actually choose the goals? Do you Because some people say, choose the biggest, most outlandish, craziest goals you can possibly think of. Mm. I mean, where, where do you go when you, when you think, okay, that's, ri- that's ridiculous? Do you, do you just play to your strengths or? If you don't like goals, then first of all, remember that it's about growth. Because some people won't do goals, no matter what you and I talk about, the guy, oh, that's not for me, right? Mm-hmm. But even that quote of it's the progress towards your goals, that can be translated somewhat to growth in your life, mm-hmm. right? So if you have a sense of growth in your finances, your careers, your health, mm-hmm. then you literally have a sense of progress and therefore happiness inside mm-hmm. oneself because you feel like you're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, when someone says, how are you? And you say, oh, getting there. I'm getting there. Where the hell's trying there? to get there? Where's there? Yeah, but where is there? <laughs> where's there? And that's the thing. You just have to find out where there is, I guess. Correct. And that's the perfect segue to mm. why goals are important. Mm. Um, so by having a goal, you are having something specific. Um, there's something called SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-driven. Mm. That was a very quick way. The, say that again. Specific, measurable, um, attainable, um, realistic, and time-driven. Real-life example... Um, I've got an event coming up, right? So on Saturday, the 14th of April, 2018, I will run a half day seminar on happiness in the Central Coast. That is giving a very specific date and it is attainable because it's in five weeks time and hey, it's going to be great. Um, but can you see how it's, it's very, it's all of those things specific, it's measurable. I'm going to have mm. 200 people at the event, you know, it's going to be great. Um, so I, I teach about this stuff. We couldn't, if we went into that now, it'd be a, a bit of a longer conversation, but mm. by using things like the smart goal techniques, um, your brain and your heart and your gut and all those parts of you believe that it's actually possible, right? So mm. when you, if you- Visualize it. 
you visualize, which is a good segue as well, right? Mm. So have you ever meditated? Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you ever done visualization? While I'm meditating? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like if I really wanted to get a job or yep. I, I really you know, wanted a relationship to work out. Yep. Uh, you know, I'd focus on, you know, the, like seeing mm-hmm. different pictures in my mind of it mm-hmm. actually working out and seeing, seeing the picture in your mind yes. and then figuring out ways to make it become a reality. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So the reason it works and that's linked that to the big goals. If you set yourself a big, exciting goal of a future that really inspires you and that you actually want, right? I want that relationship. I, yeah. You know, for example, my mission statement in Be What You Want is I want to inspire 1 billion people around the world. Yeah, wow, cool. So that's a big one, right? So I'm like, we should get that many hits, hopefully. I hope so. I look forward to that. <laughs> um, so when you've got a nice, it, sometimes people call them big, hairy, audacious goals, B hacks. Oh, really? Big, oh, hairy, audacious goals. Sounds goal. quite ugly, doesn't it? It's like a mm. hairy little monster. Um, but a, a B hack, um, what it does is it excites you and it stretches you. So when you're visualizing that, mm. it's important to use visualization techniques mm. where you are giving thanks within your heart and your body as if it's already happened, mm. right? And that's why when you start meditating, it's not just about focusing on your breath, it's about having gratitude within yourself about the things you've got in your life already. Because think about it, you've got now and you've got the future, right? So if you want to stretch yourself to something really big in the future, you need to physiologically bring yourself into a place where it's almost already happened. And that's, this, that's the trick of visualization. Actually feeling and believing that it's already happened. Exactly. It's already happening. And I teach that's about- That's a sales that. technique as well. You know, it when, is. When, when, you know, when you're trying to sell an idea yeah. or you know, sell advertising to someone or whatever mm-hmm. job you might have in the sales industry, mm-hmm. just in your mind, say, you know, this person's already doing this, this exactly. and they have to, they're crazy not to sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so the technique, the technique well. for that, right, would be um, I go into a meditation and I'll think of three things in my life that I'm grateful for. Mm. And I can do that real quick. I'll think about my son, my wife, and my daughter on the way, right? Mm. And all of a sudden, like, oh, filled full of love. And because you are filling up your body with the right neurochemicals and hormones, you're putting your body in a place of gratitude, right? And then if you can then mentally go to visualizing that place and start getting excited about it, start visualizing what your life's gonna look like in that place and who's around you and the types of things that you're doing, can you see how you've kind of almost tricked your body into saying, well, I'm feeling all this great stuff and all this love in my life and all this gratitude for the things I have. I've gone straight to the future and I'm kind of linking them, right? And then by doing that, you've got something called the mind-body connection. And the mind-body connection is that your mind will influence the physiology of your body. So for example, endorphins, eating spicy food and all mm, that stuff. Yeah. It's actually a brain to body response. Um, but if your body is in the right state, you will activate your mind in a certain way. So if you're in a determined state, I'm determined that I'm gonna come up with a solution right now, you will command your subconscious to bring you solutions. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and so that, that could even help you come up with ideas when you're asleep. Exactly. Because you, you think, I think yeah. about things yeah. sometimes before I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning and the idea is just, it's just there. And that's why it's, it's sleep like on it. Dr. Yeah. John Demartini, who yep. we had on a previous show, <laughs> this is a really crazy thing he said. He used to just, like you being a sponge, he would absorb so many different ideas, so many different books, ways of life, mm-hmm. studying Gandhi, Buddha, whatever. And then he'd, he'd go to sleep. Mm-hmm. As soon as he's, you know, finished learning and reading a lot of that stuff, and mm-hmm. he knows it would be in his head, and he'd be going over it while he's asleep. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. So then think about reactiveness versus responding in life. So mm. there's a link to happiness here. If you get, if you're finding yourself angry or frustrated or wanting to, you know, mm. punch some, punch someone in the face, literally or metaphorically, and um, rather than reacting in the moment, sleep on it. Right, because when you sleep on it, you allow your subconscious to come up with a different solution that's more of a response that's not going to destroy everything around you. So, are you saying it's okay to sleep on the job? <laughs> yes, of Actually, course. Well, <laughs> do you know some of the best inventions were made by inventors that took afternoon naps? Really, absolutely, like who, Mr. Sponge Edison, um, the electricity thought guy. of the light bulb. So, he was asleep and went, Bing. Do you know that Edison <laughs> totally stole everything that Tesla did, though? What? Oh, yeah, are man. you serious? Oh, yeah. But we won't go down the conspiracy theory route. Yeah, we will. Oh, well, why not? I love that. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, so Edison, I thought, invented the light bulb. Well, he did, but then he was also involved with the electricity grids, and you've got alternating current versus direct current, right? Yeah. DC and so that's the, a Tesla thing. 
well, Tesla was all about AC and these coils and wireless energy and yeah. energy weapons and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, he had a, where was it? It was an island, Rhode Island, I think it was, mm. um, off the States. And, uh, and he built this Tesla coil thing that was all about wireless energy. And uh, JP Morgan was one of the investors. And when he knew that it was actually going to be free energy, they knew they couldn't uh, industrialize that. They couldn't make money out of it. And Edison was one of the guys that was the original ones of direct current, which is the other way of doing electricity. Hmm. This is a complete tangent, but um, there was, it's, the, it's an example of the embeddedness of um, energy as a sector. That's crazy, man. I mean, I mean, but it makes complete sense. If like one of the richest men in the world, JP Morgan goes, here's a good idea, yeah. but we just have to get rid of that other guy who's going to make energy free. Yep. But I mean, that is a conspiracy theory because surely someone would have put something on the internet somewhere where we could figure out how all to have free energy. Fact. All fact. It's all facts. All conspiracy well, facts, yes. But what, what, yeah. what happened with, um, with Tesla? Did he actually... Just, just decide not he, to show everyone how to get free energy. So, I think how's when, that fact? I think when he died, um, his hotel room got burnt to the ground or something like that. Right. Okay. All these, you know, he's a very eccentric man. Very but that's, eccentric that's like man. the the other conspiracy theory oh, about yeah. you know tires. Like you know, apparently there's a rubber that's been invented that never wears out, never right. breaks. Right. You know, I mean, there's so many of those. Oh, man, absolutely. And we could go down that rabbit hole, yeah. right? That's a completely other show. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure we will. So if someone's in their job, going oh. back to the happiness thing, and, and yeah. they're thinking, okay, I know I'm not happy. Yeah. Um, because I think you need to be in the right career. For mm-hmm. the, um, this is a career perspective. Mm. To be able to set goals. Like, how do you figure out yeah. what is going to make you happy and, and, and what career path to follow? Because... A lot of times I've been, well, I don't want to set goals because yeah. I'm in this job I'm not really that sure about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I need to figure out what I'm into and mm-hmm. what I love and what I can make money out of. And how do you figure out what you're into and what you love that you can make money out of? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm referring to Dr. John again. He, mm-hmm. I went to see his, uh, his talk that he, he did um, over at the ICC in Sydney. And he, we were having this conversation or he was talking about it on stage and I was listening. That was my conversation. And he said there was a lady in the audience once and she had no idea what she wanted to do with her life. She was doing a dead end job and all she could think of that she loved was playing with her dog. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, why don't you just, um, you know, start a dog business? You know, you love playing with your dog. Okay. What kind of dog business? And they worked on an idea and apparently it's like worth millions now. Exactly. So I guess you just got to look at your life and figure out what makes you happy and what you love. You do. And there's, th- there's three elements. There's values, purpose, and passion. Mm. So the value side is very useful because your values are different from your beliefs, right? Your beliefs are, for example, your religious beliefs might be, you know, I'm either religious or I'm this or I'm that, and my beliefs I don't question, right? So beliefs you don't question. Values are these guiding, a guiding idea that you have in life. So for example, I have the value of vitality. I believe in looking after myself because I, when I'm my optimal self, I can give more to my family, to the world, to everything. So I have this idea of vitality. So it's a value of mine. That's why there's so many personal trainers out there because, oh, I, I like exercising. I feel good. I'm going to become a personal I like trainer. Really really. There are so many. In Bondi, <laughs> I think every, every second person is a PT. Absolutely right. But you can do exercises in identifying your values. And the reason that that's relevant is that most people don't have a conscious awareness of what your values are and and also what the sequence is, right? So the sequence could be relevant too. So for example, vitality is number one for me and then love is number two. Now love then is a wonderful guiding principle to all these things that I'll do in life. But if I don't put vitality first, then I'm not being my optimal loving self because I'm not looking after myself from a self-care point of view. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more I can look after myself, the more energy I have, the more, yeah, more love. More love to give. Yeah, right? So, um, when you know your values, and and again, there's exercises that I teach and how you do this, you put them in sequence, you go, wow, that's me, that's interesting. And then the next step is to actually ask yourself some very honest questions about... Mm is your current career aligned to your values? Mm. Is it an expression of who you are? Because people get set in their ways. Oh, yeah. It's so hard to break the mold of who you are, what you are, where you're going, you know, just the situation that you're in. How do you break out of it to go that way? Go that direction. Good, good. To find your values and then 
construct a career around that so i come back down to the holisticness so you know i said at the beginning hey happiness is a happiness is a holistic equation we need to understand all these things that connect together so just by even spending 10 20 minutes doing an exercise like that all of a sudden you start to crack this belief system that you've got which might be about i'm in finance i'm this person you know this is who i am i could never possibly leave i've got the kids i've got the mortgage i've got whatever or you know how could I possibly ever make a career out of playing with dogs, right? Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you've got to start shining a light around all of these connected parts. And then by bringing that awareness, literally, that's the genesis of choice. That's literally that wonderful golden moment where choice magically appears and you go, actually, I can do that, mm. right? I can have a career in something that matters to me. Um, it's like I used to be in IT. Ugh, yeah, yeah right? you got out of that, didn't you? I got out of that. I did it for six years, but mm. I was the happy, chirpy guy that was all about relationships and injecting mm. positivity. And that was naturally, yes, who I was. But, but you know, what on earth was I doing in that? I mean, mm. yeah, got a little bit of an inner geek. But, you know, apart from that. Yeah, yeah, that's your cryptocurrency world. Yes, speaking. it is. Uh, hello. Um, <laughs> it's going on with Bitcoin today. Where is oh, it? My Let's God. check. Where's it at right now? <laughs> you know, speaking about things that make you happy, we're happy when Bitcoin goes up. Okay, it's at, uh, let's see, 11,500 Australian dollars at well, the moment. That's still better than what I bought in that. It's okay. Yeah. But we, we should talk about crypto because you, yeah. me, you and I both follow it a lot and mm-hmm. we're on a little chat group mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it make, makes people happy. That's our dopamine hit whenever it goes up. That's actually true in all seriousness, being part of a local community where well, that could be a surf club, but also could be something online. So like when you and I are chatting with our group or whatever about cryptocurrency. It's fun, you feel good. It's you're fun. talking to other people, you're interacting, talking about something that they know, they love, you love. Exactly. And you, you, you see a future for, for the uh-huh. planet because it's, it's a good thing and mm-hmm. you're making money out of it, is, which is a good thing. So that's oxytocin coming down to neurochemicals again, right? Mm. Um, that's literally the sense of group bonding. We are into cryptocurrencies right yeah you get that sense of we which is a happy feeling Except, although there's a couple of dudes in on that group i think we need to kick <laughs> not you henrik you're right yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> getting a little bit private joke wisecracky here but uh yeah that's true yeah mm. find, finding a community mm. and, and friends mm-hmm. that you can chat with about something you love yep and that's the great thing about yeah, the internet and how much it's exploded over the last 10 15 years is the fact that if you like, you know, watching one-legged men play soccer competitions, you can find a group of people that love watching it as well, and yeah. you can all be best buddies and talk about it. And you can find the craziest little subcultures mm-hmm. and be a part of a community. Mm-hmm. And people are finding each other all over the world. Some good, some bad, yeah. and and that that could be happiness in a lot of ways for them. Yeah, absolutely. there are easier ways to find happiness than ever. And that, like, take, take, go from cryptos to blockchain, mm. and blockchain has got peer to peer, right? I, Chris Hall and Mike Goldman can yeah. directly exchange. But normally something. we'd go peer to peer, that's fun, you're giving yeah. me money or whatever, but normally yeah. you go, go through a bank and, like, fuck the banks! Fucking took some of my money, and then you get the rest of yeah. fucking banks that took some of my money. But that could be something real. Like there's, there's so many, there are literally gaming communities online yeah. that are all about well, World of Warcraft or whatever it is you're into. Mm. Blockchain brings a way of directly exchanging not just value, but ideas and being creative and creating communities together. Yeah. So but I think that's a really exciting place to be in terms mm. of the world. Especially in, in some of those African nations yeah. that are absolutely being screwed over by the people who are running those countries. Yeah. Like families who are running different countries there that, mm-hmm. that are just raping the money out of those those countries and now these people that are there i don't you know know the, the particular countries off the top of my head but mm-hmm. people who are, who are there can now go okay i'm going to earn mm-hmm. the same amount of bitcoin or litecoin or mm-hmm. whatever from another country mm-hmm. and i can exchange it for a hell of a lot more than what the currency is worth in that country like venezuela is finding that as well with the, pe- the petro that they're launching. Do you know that? Um, do you know that Venezuela has heavily subsidised electricity, right? So yeah. the government's getting really peed off because everyone's Bitcoin mining there now. Oh no! Right, the electricity's all, free over there. Jack, pretty much. No way. So they're jacking in these Bitcoin miners, and they you know, and that normally costs you hundreds, if not thousands, a year in electricity yeah. costs, and they're making a killing. Yeah. But wow. they had to because the currency collapsed. Did Did you hear that uh, Vladimir Putin has offered uh, cryptocurrency miners free electricity outside of the nuclear power plants in Russia? Wow. 
Wow. Because obviously there's a lot of free energy coming yeah. out of those yeah. nuclear power plants. Yep. But yep. it's exciting in, in so many different ways and, and it's creating so many opportunities mm. for people all over the world to mm-hmm. make the world a better place. I mean, there's a lot of dodgy people out mm-hmm. there that are just pumping and dumping, yep. you know, just, just raping the blockchain for money. Yep. But I think there's a lot of people who are in it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. And I met one yesterday. I've been trying to get him on the show, Charlie mm-hmm. Lee, who started Litecoin. Nice. Oh, you met him yesterday. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And yep. it, it, this guy, uh, hearing him talk, he sold most of his Litecoin, yep. but he still runs the company. And he's basically going around the world just trying to get people to use it as a currency. Yep. Because that's that's the way mm-hmm. that you change the world and you, you get people people using it. It's just mm-hmm. talk it up everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. And he's someone who thinks twice about what he sends out on Twitter because yep. unlike John McAfee, who's the king of the pump and dump, who talks up stuff left, right and center for his own good, mm-hmm. well, at least it looks like that anyway, uh, he's someone who you know believes in it for the greater good of man. And it's, it's really nice and empowering to, mm-hmm. to, to see that. But he, he was a really cool dude. Mm. So what, what are some of the cryptos that you're into? You I mean, obviously you're into Bitcoin, but you, you're, you're on there every day talking <laughs> about stuff. What, what's the latest? I'm invested in 18 different coins. Um, so like I like some of the stuff that's going to change the world from a content generation point of view. So mm. for example, Steemit is an alternative to YouTube or even some of the existing social media platforms. Yeah, where you pay the people who make the content? You do, exactly. So rather than relying on advertising, it's the peer-to-peer thing again, where Mm. if you like what I do, then just like, for example, on Medium, which is not crypto, is you can give a clap, right, if you liked reading someone's blog. Mm. And so you pay the content generator directly. Yeah through that effort and it could be a micro payment right yeah um and again like you know you mentioned for example if you're in a economically uh, say a third world country um you can now get access to doing things that are all around micro tasks and it might be just earning like an air tasker thing yeah a kenya but the digital version right so you doesn't matter where you are in the world you can do that task yeah and you'll earn 50 make a website for someone or something like that exactly and it's it's, it's breaking down all of those global uh, barriers and it's just breaking down the walls yeah which is great Mm. because it's it's genuinely that's that's what economies are all about that's what value is there's another one power ledger if you've got solar panels on your roof you know and someone next door wants your power then they can pay you with power ledger coins Mm -hmm. the kenya coin that i just mentioned before which Mm -hmm. is an app like airtasker getting people to do things all over the planet and they just did a deal with jd.com which is like the, another version of alibaba in china yep and there's so many exciting things that are happening any more off the top of your head you can think of that you um, like yeah so I, mean, I like it for investment reasons um but there's something called funfair um which is about revolutioning the gambling on the blockchain i've seen funfair there's yeah like the fun coins yeah fun coins yeah, Lots yeah, of yeah. fun. and so what's the latest um, with that one well basically they're about to launch in june mm. and um the whole point of that is that and you can save all these transaction fees. So if you go into an online casino, you have to pay 3% on your Amex card, your MasterCard each time you place Mm. a bet. Mm. With these guys, it's all contained within something called the Fate channel, right? And it's getting techie here, but it basically means they're keeping it all within this nice little ecosystem. Mm. And so you can go for your life on gambling if you want to. I'm not a gambler, no. um, but you know, hey. Um, By the way, I've got to say this, this is not investment advice. We have no deals going with any of these coins. If you know nothing about cryptocurrency, even if you know stuff about it, do your own research, yes. seek financial advice, because we're not qualified. Do not listen to us in any way, shape or form. This is just what we've been doing. Do you know what the truth is though? I think that when, when it's going up, and this is the thing about cryptos when you get yeah. involved, right? I remember getting involved a bit more in the beginning of January, put in whatever I put in, and it was going great. And by mid January, it's like, bang, you know, everything's Yay. going on. And everyone thinks you're an expert and everyone starts talking about yeah. stuff going, this is going to change the world. Yeah. And all of a sudden, 70% down, yeah, 90% like, down. Oh no. Blood in the streets. No one knows anything anymore. Exactly. We think we know. Is um, it going to go back up this year or is it just people talking positively? I reckon you've got to know that it's a um, very much an un- unregulated industry mm. and that, you know, that brings the opportunity, but it brings the volatility as well. Yeah. So you've got to have... It brings gut- dodgy fuckers. It does too. And you've got to have guts of steel and it will be stressful. Yeah. And you also only should play with money you're willing to lose. When it goes down, just just <laughs> don't look at it. Just leave it alone because it's going to come back up because it is volatile. That's what I'm hoping right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people panic when it, when it goes yeah. down. They're going to sell. It's going to go to zero. Yeah. You know, most of it's, Unless it's a dodgy coin, not dodge coin. Apparently, that's all right. That's all I heard. Yeah. Uh, unless it's a dodgy coin, you know, usually it, it comes back. But, but what if you've you got do- the money to gamble with and play with it, 
get in there. But what do you do in a time like that, right? You don't look at the screen. It's just like anything that's stressful in life. You go and look after yourself. That's when I go for a run. Yes. Right? That's when I go for a massage. You've got to be, got to be happy. But yeah. if, if people do have uh, any Bitcoin, um, Charlie mentioned a couple of things yesterday that you can do a Bitcoin or Litecoin. There's a couple of different uh, different websites you can go to to pay your bills. Do you know about them? I've heard of it. I'm I can't remember the name right now, but yes, you can You can already do it. You can pay. Salt's amazing, where you can get a loan off the back of your cryptos. Yeah, that's that's a coin as well. But it's not for paying your bills. But but you, but you the principle is that, you know, yeah. Living Room Satoshi. That's that it. Yeah. Living, yeah, that's the one. Living Room Satoshi, you can, you can pay your bills in mm-hmm. Bitcoin. So I guess there's some sort of transfer fee or something like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, another one I had a look at, and these, that's an Australian company too, by the way. Another one is called Travel by Bit, okay. where you can book travel experiences in Australia and around the world. Well, a mate of ours did that, didn't he? I'll, I'll keep him on name, but this founder of our group, shall we say, um, and he spent whatever it was, half a Bitcoin on a flight, and that was last year, and then he said it was the most expensive flight he ever had. Yeah, because it went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> he's kicking himself. <laughs> so um, you've got that uh, weekend coming up on the 25th? Yeah, 25th is of it? March. Um, brief shout out to Be, Be What You Want is doing an event where we're hosting my father-in-law, Mr. Paul Graves. Now, Paul Graves is literally one of the pioneers of the snowboarding industry. Hmm. He was the first pro snurfer rider, which a snurfing was literally surfing down the mountain on this board that had a, a rope on it and all this stuff and it was like the predecessor oh, wow. to snowboarding. Oh yeah, okay, cool. And he was the 1979 snurfer champion. He invented snowboarding. He was one of the pioneers for <laughs> sure, wow, right? That's like, cool. Oh, he's a humble man, but to me he's in, like... He was one so of what the is guys. he going to, going to talk about? Snurfing or? So he's going to his talks called a spoke in the wheel, and he's literally going to talk about what it meant to even get snowboards legalized on the mountain. He was one of the guys that was you know, rallying for support and changing the way that the world looked at snowboarding as an industry. Mm. Um, cool. He was sponsored by Rossignol. He oh, got people massive. right, and he got people to the Olympics. He coached oh, wow. people, all that kind of stuff. And he's so humble, but an incredible man. Mm. Um, so it's a pleasure, I think, for anyone to meet him. Yeah. That's in the Central Coast. That's at Evoke Beach Surf Life Saving Club on cool. Sunday the 25th. Excellent. Um, for details, go to Facebook forward slash be what you want. Yeah. That's my business. And that's that's your first show you're putting on. Yeah, that's going to cool. be our, our first event. Um, and then following that, on the 14th of April, I'm doing a session on happiness. So I'm going to do a half day, short and sweet, but get to the point, have some, you know, experiential things where we'll really you know yeah, workshops and stuff with people yeah like let's coach live and really connect with some people yeah you know? nice yeah and that's going to be on saturday the 14th of april cool. again at the surf club and where can people find you online um so online on all the social media platforms i go by the username follow chris hall so that's on twitter facebook um all the good stuff like medium for blogging um and then if you want to find what our business is doing it's at be what you want.net mm. so it's dot net be what you want.net and then I'm also available as a speaker. So if you want me to come in to say your workplace to talk about happiness, how to stop procrastinating or some of the other more corporate stuff I do, then you can go to chrishall.com. And you can get me as well for Christmas parties, bar mitzvahs, 21st, just give me a call. Absolutely. Mate, that's exciting. Uh, good on you. And, and well done for, for changing your life like you have. And you've been through so many incredible things and you know, leaving the job you didn't like and creating this incredible future and it looks like you're helping other people do the same thing. So we salute you, Chris Hall. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Chris Hall from Be What You Want. Thank Good you for watching. Thanks, mate. Good on you, man. Thank you.